Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. Good Tuesday morning to you by Molly Hendrickson. And I'm Nicole Brady. Here's the latest from Denver 7. A bill bringing sweeping changes to oil and gas regulation in Colorado is now a step closer to the governor's desk. At around 2 this morning, the House Energy and Environment Committee approved the bill by a vote of 7-4. to four. It puts an emphasis on health and safety when approving permits for drilling and gives towns and cities more power to regulate the industry in their own communities. Critics say it will be a job killer. The Senate approved the bill last week. It's expected to pass the House as well, and Governor Polis will sign it. Today, the push to reduce prescription drug costs continues at the state capitol. We've already gone 360 on the plan with perspectives from patients who say the high cost of drugs forces them to make dangerous decisions. The pharmaceutical industry, which says importing drugs is not the answer. Lawmakers who say they're putting patients first and states like Vermont that have already approved similar plans. Now we have a new perspective on the debate from a former FBI director. Denver 7's Micah Smith has the story. Former FBI director Louis Freed told me importing drugs from other countries is dangerous, and he says doing that could open Colorado up for an increase in circulation for counterfeit pills. The bill moving through the Colorado legislature could create a program to import prescription drugs from Canada, but Free says if Colorado and other states move to import those drugs, this could put a strain on law enforcement officers who are already stretched thin fighting the opioid epidemic. Free says drugs may seem cheaper when they're imported from Canada, but they actually may not be from that country. Said to be Canada, but in fact it's not Canada. The drugs uh, that we're talking about are medicines that are being transshipped through Canada from uh, many countries. But lawmakers argue Canada has the same drugs from the same manufacturing plants that we have in the U.S. Today, the Senate Appropriations Committee will listen to this bill. We will be in that meeting bringing you the very latest. Reporting from the state capitol, Micah Smith, Denver 7. A recent study from the Kaiser Family Foundation finds the majority of Americans support importing drugs from Canada. 80% of adults favor the plan. The study also found 79% of adults find the cost of prescription drugs unreasonable. Only 25% trust pharmaceutical companies to price drugs fairly. Defiance in the face of new gun legislation. Today, at least three more counties in Colorado will decide whether to become sanctuaries for the Second Amendment. It's a preemptive move to skirt enforcement of the so-called red flag bill. That bill, which is up in a Senate committee today, would allow a judge to temporarily remove guns from someone in a mental health crisis at the request of family or law enforcement. Costilla, Delta, and Chafee counties will all consider the Second Amendment sanctuary designation today. Colorado Congresswoman Diana DeGette is trying to clear the air with one of our state's largest polluters. The Suncor refinery north of Denver releases 8.5 tons of hydrogen cyanide into the air each year. A 2015 study found the air around the refinery has levels seven times higher than the risk threshold for the chemical. Today, Representative DeGette plans to introduce a bill to close a loophole that allows the company to set its own limits for the release of the toxic chemical. Neighbors say air quality has been an issue for years. Who can forget back in March of 2017, the refinery pumped hundreds of pounds of toxic gases into the air during a power outage. The company was fined for that release. Suncor says in a statement it cares about safety and works with regulatory agencies, but did not address the levels of hydrogen cyanide it releases each year. Boulder City Councilors are launching an independent investigation into a police incident involving a black student who says officers pointed guns at him while he was just picking up trash in his yard. Zayad Atkinson was detained by police during the confrontation two weeks ago. A city council committee last night held a meeting on race and announced that former district attorney Stan Garnett will perform an independent review of the incident. But Atkinson and fellow community members say that isn't enough. They want a citizen review board to look into the case. And I have asked for an independent review of what happened to me by a Boulder outsider. Instead, Boulder has picked a nine-year Boulder district attorney to do a secondary investigation. Boulder has not taken this request seriously, <clears throat> and I have been ignored, and my power has been taken away again. 
The Boulder Police Department is currently performing an internal investigation into the incident. If you're in a car accident or have an emergency in an unfamiliar area, it can be tough to give your location to a 911 dispatcher. But in the last year, Apple, Android, and other companies have been working to improve 911's location services. They've developed a product called Rapid SOS to pinpoint your location, an old system. Depending on your signal strength, carrier, and phone, 911 might only be able to pinpoint your location within 3 to 10 miles. But this new system allows 911 to get your coordinates and track your location to a 30 to 60 foot area. The city of Denver and now Weld County are two of the agencies in Colorado using Rapid SOS. They may not know where they're at on Highway 52. They may not know that they're in Prospect Valley and they may say, you know, I'm out somewhere past Hudson. And in this case, it would pinpoint exactly where somewhere out past Hudson is, which could be quite a few miles. If they're unable to give where they're at because of the injury, we could trace where their cell phone is to be able to get an ambulance or law enforcement there much quicker. Now, dispatchers can also look up a location for a call, even if it's lost or someone hangs up. 35 agencies across Colorado are now using this system. The key is making sure your location services is turned on. For the first time since 2013, the Denver Nuggets are playoff bound. The team clinched a spot with a 114 to 105 victory over the Boston Celtics. Yeah, Nikola Jokic led the team with a double double, 21 points and 13 rebounds. Now with a playoff berth secure. It's all about seeding. It's going to be a tight race with the top eight teams in the conference within seven games of each other. So the good news with the win, the Nuggets are now tied with the Warriors for the top spot. After the game, you can see players celebrated not with the traditional champagne or Gatorade, but this celebration was with water. That's all they needed, right? <laughs> uh, now for the first alert forecast, here's Stacy Donaldson. Hey there. We'll have some clouds across the area today. Highs in the low 40s, but then it warms up for the first day of spring 55 degrees for an afternoon high tomorrow and we'll be in the upper 50s on Thursday chance for rain showing up by Friday but check out this weekend 50s and 60s for highs with lots of sunshine and by Monday we'll be up to 62 degrees with partly cloudy skies. All right, thanks, Stacy. Flooding conditions in Nebraska may be the worst the state has ever seen. Vice President Mike Pence will visit the state today to get a look at the damage. Meanwhile, help is on the way for victims of the flooding from right here in Colorado. A church in Aurora is taking donations. Nebraska has the greatest people, the most loving, caring people, and uh, it's time for them to feel the love from the rest of the country now. Peace with Christ Lutheran Church on South Tower Road and Floyd Avenue in Aurora is accepting donations now through Thursday. They're looking for work gloves, snow shovels to move debris, baby food, diapers, dog or cat food, and non-perishable food. They're not taking any clothing or water. If you want to drop off donations, you can go from 9 till 7 each day through Thursday. Items will be taken to churches in Hooper and Fremont, Nebraska. Most college students head somewhere warm for spring break, but this week a group of students students from Georgia Tech is skipping the beach and coming here to Colorado for a solar spring break. The students will be installing solar panels on the homes of low income residents in Thornton this week. The qualifying residents get solar panels and the students get training. One of the interns in the local program is actually going to help install solar panels on his own mother's home. He's excited to go green, you know what I mean? Like go solar because you know, that energy bill is just, you know, it's the death of us. So Grid Alternatives offers the free solar programs to low-income families. And to learn more information or apply for the program, head to thedenverchannel.com. This has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thanks for joining us. And make sure you check back here later today for another update and download the free Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. Have a great day.